Hello and welcome to Melanie's Muses, where I'm used about things in the entertainment world that are entertaining to me and sometimes weird and random other videos too, just depending what my mood is. And hopefully you guys stay along for the ride. Today I'm really excited because I'm back with one of my author Zoom chats and I have author Kim Alexander here with us. Hi Kim! Hi! I'm so Hi. delighted so, to be here. It's so great to have you here. Now you are a new to me author and I'm pretty sure you're going to be a new to my Muses author. Okay. So tell me a bit about what you do. All right. Um, I write uh, epic fantasy and I also write paranormal romance. And this came after a very long career in broadcasting where uh, I was a book reviewer and an author interviewer for many years. And so I right, listened- We flip the script now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I asked tons, it was like a mass, I got a free masterclass for almost 10 years, basically. I talked to every author you can possibly think of. Nice. And, and most of them were really delightful and very generous. And I, you know, sucked their brains dry like the intellectual vampire I like to think of myself as, nice and turned around and started started writing uh, when I left that that job we can talk more about uh, about that later if you'd like sure but uh, yeah I've been writing full-time for almost 10 years I've got wow. one complete epic fantasy series called the demon door and pardon me as I shake the camera that's all right there's the uh, the first book in that series uh -huh. And, and there's four books in that series. There's four books in that series. And there's also one bonus book, uh, which is a in-world romance novel. Uh, <laughs> a lot of the chapters in this first book have little short excerpts from a very over-the-top, very bodice-ripping old-school romance novel, which is important to the plot. And obviously. I got to the end of the, yeah, obviously. I got to the end of like this, the second or something, and I went, you know, maybe I ought to go ahead and write that book. So I took all those crazy little excerpts and I had like 10 pages of, of quotes from, from that book, which is called The Claiming of the Duke. And I somehow managed to write a romance novel. It's, it's very short. And uh, if, if you go to my website and you sign up for my newsletter, I'll just send you a copy of it. And it's kind of dirty. So just be aware of that going in. Full, um, uh, full disclosure, it is kind of dirty. It is kind of dirty. Oh yeah, it's extremely dirty. <laughs> Most of my users are quite on board with all of that stuff but good to know if you're not and what i would do is when i do the description for the video i will put a link uh -huh. up to your website okay. so that people can go and sign up for the newsletter if you want to read if you want to read the dirt do you want to read the filthy yeah. book i want to read the filthy book i mean you, you i i hope you do I mean. so i got to the end of i got to the end of that series which took a huge big chunk of my life it's very long i, I mean i love long huge really juicy world building complex lots of characters you know very lots of banter but it was a long series and uh, I wanted to experiment and see if I could do something different. So the next series is very short. Uh, the first book, particularly Pure, is quite short. And it, this oh, is that's the one here. I've just downloaded. Yep. Yeah. And read the tagline for Pure. Kim, you've got to read the tag because I read that and I was just like, oh, that, that is classic. A unicorn walks into a bar. That is not a joke. That's the tagline. That's the tagline. I was just like, okay, you got me unicorn walking into a bar. I mean, it's set in Washington DC, which is my hometown. The main character Ruby is a bartender, and on the um, that's not a spoiler because it's practically on the first page. She saves the life of a unicorn who's a unicorn shifter because otherwise it would be a very different kind of book. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he turns into a hot dude, and his name is March, and they're on the run, and they have adventures, and they are in DC, and then they're in the outlying areas of DC. And uh, I love my hometown, so I got to make it a little bit of a character in this book. Uh, the second one is also out. That's called The March Effect. And uh, the third one and fourth one I'm working on right now. And now, March, that's year. the unicorn, right? Because Gladys had a question. Name. Gladys yeah. had a question about March. So I'm going to throw that up there now. I'm going to sure. go straight in with the questions just as they sort of come up. Lay it on so, me, baby. Yeah. She said, why is your unicorn named March? Shouldn't it be called Marshmallow? He is, he's definitely a cinnamon roll. He is a sweet, soft boy uh, with, with an edge, obviously. Got to have a little bit of an edge. Well, he said he was he's, hot, so. He's you know. a darling. I love him so much. Uh, he's very confused about the human world, but I love him so much. So I spent a lot of time on names. I think names are, are so important. And when I started writing fantasy, um, my friends all said to me, don't make the names this long and don't just like stick random commas in there and Basically, you want to be able to pronounce them in your head. So I like to use fairly simple names, and I like to use Google Translate or any Translate program to make the name somehow make sense within the context of the character. And as it turns out, March is a word in Welsh that means stallion. Oh, so okay. I thought, well, that's, so that's kind of a, clever. It's a kind of a sexy name. It's not overused. You know, it's not like 
something that you read a lot. And yet I think it's a good yeah. name and it, it worked within the context of, of the character. So March it is. Uh, he's also occasionally called uh, Reem, R-E-E-M, which is Hebrew uh, for rhinoceros. Oh, see, that, very good. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of antique texts, uh, that word comes up and they're talking about unicorns, but what they mean is a rhinoceros. Although I think March probably would be pretty offended if you called him a rhinoceros. Yeah, I'm thinking that March might not be so keen on that. It would see, be I love that, that with names. Susan Harris, who I work with a lot, I have the what we call the power of veto, and I veto so many names because I'm just like, no, mm -hmm. no, names are really, really important. I'm going to go back, really, because I was thinking about it while um, you were talking about that. You said that the one that you get free if you sign up for your newsletter yeah. Yeah. is like a story, but it's related to the other one. Now, if we jump in and read that, are we going to be yeah. lost on the other stuff, or do we need to read the series first? It's, it's, it more, it's standalone. There's some stuff oh. that will make you go, why are there two moons in this planet? Um, but uh, it, it, I think it would make sense. But I think it would be more fun to read if you read the series first. Okay. Uh, because there's a lot of Easter eggs in it, which I love doing. I think it's a lot of fun. That's that's something that's a real pleasure. Uh, these leaping little gifts for your readers. And I do that a lot. I think that's awesome. I love, I'm a huge fan of Easter eggs in anything, in book series, in TV series. In, in, the Easter eggs for me are one of the best parts of it. I mean, I know you're a Whovian. Doctor Who's very good sure. at it. Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Easter eggs. I remember watching Doctor Who years and years and years ago. And I remember going, that's the second time I've seen something on the wall that says bad wolf. <laughs> bad wolf was such I love a stuff big like one. that. I love stuff like that. That was such a big one. And then when it, when it sort of came out, that's what it was. It was so obvious. It was, it was like, yeah, <sighs> but I, I love stuff that rewards uh, an attentive and careful reader. I, I just love that. And I want to, I want to reward that. So I, I, I leave that a lot. And I think if you're, if you like that, I think it makes it more fun as well. If you like that and you like to find that, and I can tell you readers love, stuff like that I, i'm definitely all about the easter eggs yeah so those are you those are the big two series the, the two have, series I'm, that i'm working on yeah they're the ones that you're working on okay so well one i'm done working on uh unless a one. sequel that i haven't really thought of yet pops to mind which you never know but or yeah spin-off series pardon spin-off series i'm a big fan of spin-offs <laughs> I'm I'm kind of trying to concentrate on the one I'm working on right now yeah. and maybe get back to the epic fantasy at another time. Mm. Um, but yeah, the paranormal romance is the one that that's the under the one that's underway right now. Yeah. So I'm like a big I fan said, of paranormal romance. I don't mind epic fantasy, but sometimes if there's so much plot things going on, my brain takes so long to sort of get in that mindset. Paranormal romance, that's my jam. That's my jam, baby. Right. I have questions. I have some questions here that uh, I have answers. You have answers. That's good. <laughs> Not necessarily to those questions, but I have answers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll go with that. So I'm going to start right at the top because you were just okay. saying about naming characters. Susan Harris, who I already mentioned, says, what part of the writing process do you hate the most? Now it says, example, naming the character. I'm guessing you kind of like naming the characters. That's yeah. fun for you. Yeah, it is. But blurbs, synopsis, what bits do you not like? I am, I'm not alone in this either. I'm so bad at blurbs and synopses. I'm, I mean, I don't want to take hard. a 40,000 word story and condense it down into one paragraph. Mm -hmm. uh, all the characters, probably because all the characters are equally important to me, the side characters, yeah. the main characters. So I want to put them all in there and I want to talk about all of them at great length, which is not the purpose of a blurb. So I've got a friend mm -hmm. named Kate Reynolds, who's also a, a very good writer. And she's I've got a gift with blurbs and synapses, synapses and synopses. Synopses and synapses. Yeah. Okay. So I, I I give them to her. Thank God I found somebody to outsource the, the blurbs and synopses to. On the other hey. hand, my favorite thing is writing dialogue. I feel really fortunate in that I, I seem to yeah. really have a knack for it. Um, usually the first drafts of my books are like people standing in a white room talking to each other. And my editor will be like, they're there's stuff on the walls, I assume, and they're wearing clothes and, you know, they're doing things. You, you've, what you've written is a screenplay, Kim, and that's <laughs> not what, unless that's what you were shooting for, which it's not. So I love, unless, especially party scenes, lots of, you know, banter and snappy dialogue. That's, so do you that's hear them? Do you, the characters do. talk to you, like, in your I head? Do. I do hear them. Uh, when I was interviewing authors, uh, one of the questions I always used to ask was about that, like, do you hear them talking to you? And they right. always be like, yes, they talk to me and they tell me what to do. And I just try and transcribe. And I'd be like, these people are mentally ill. As it turns out. You know, I've heard that a lot. 
from authors. They're like, you know, I'd hear these authors say these characters would talk to me and they would direct where I was mm-hmm. going with the story and they sort of lead everything. And I was like, these authors are uh, nuts. Because they're nuts. They're, you're the author and you're in control and they're going to do what I say. And you don't. would think that would be the case, but you would be mistaken. Uh, I, I'm not a good sleeper. I lay there and I toss and turn. And that turns out to be a good thing because that's when I guess the, the front of your brain is relaxed enough for the back brain to creep forward and I they just start talking. I don't know. <laughs> they just, they start talking and I just pay attention and, and literally try and transcribe. And I know the stuff that I hear in that situation where I hear those conversations and I hear those interchanges and I see how they're relating to each other more, more here, honestly, than see. I know those are the, the parts of the books that are going to need the least amount of editing. They're like straight from the, the well, they're straight from the source. Uh, oddly enough, the other time that happens is at the end of a yoga class in Shavasana, when you're supposed to be meditating, that's when I start to hear plot points <laughs> resolve. Like, we and, have a story for you. We have yeah. a story. So that's why we, I think it's like you have to like be in that state of relaxation. Like some people in the shower, for instance, you have to be yeah. in that relaxed state to let the gates open. So. Yeah, I always say that. It's like if you if you need the answer to something and you can't remember, just go to sleep and you'll wake up yeah. at three o'clock in the morning and it will randomly yeah. smack you in the face and be like, ha ha. And then write it down because otherwise you'll forget. Yeah. It's very many is, many is the here. night. Many is the night that I've been in the bathroom with the light on at three o'clock in the morning. Like, <laughs> I don't want to wake people up. <laughs> That's very considerate of you. I'm I think so. I'm sure you're considerate. Very pleased about that. He is. It's interesting you say here because I'm a very audio person in general. Mm-hmm. Now, funny enough, I don't like audio books at all. That, uh-huh. That's not because I read a lot faster than I did. Yeah. But with everything else, I'm definitely an audio person. Do you think that's why maybe you don't have so much detail on the thing? Because you can hear it all. And so the seeing details are less important to you because it's it's the dialogue that clicks. I, for you. you know, I think you you might you might be onto something. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's because of my background in radio that I'm really maybe. tuned into, you know I know when we're watching part of it movies and things like I have my husband says I must have some kind of face blindness because like voices I can pick up on but people's faces especially mm-hmm. if they have like a different look now you think considering I have so many different looks I'd be really good at that but I'm not if they've aged like even a tiny bit or dyed their hair I can't place them and so and that's in real life too it's like real life if I was to bump into you in the street chances are I would not recognize you I am the worst at that I have first of all I can't see I have really bad vision. And I used to work at in a building that had very long hallways and they were fairly low lit. And I'd see somebody at the other end of the hallway and I'd be like, oh shit, okay, it's a man. It's a tall man. It's a tall man wearing a hat. It's Bill. Hi, Bill. I love that. I I can so relate to that. I'm just so not a, a visual person. And my husband is like completely the opposite. He has these amazing recognition skills. And he can recognize people that it's been like, you know, they haven't been in something for 30 years. And he's like, oh, that's a yeah. sunset from this. I'm like, do that yeah I find that very annoying my husband can do that too (laughs) and he remembers every piece of gossip ever sold about any person ever he's got a really good memory which I do not Ah, I remember useless things like 80s song lyrics yeah yeah (laughs) 80s song lyrics and bad movie plots that's my is it useless though (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) it kind of is pretty much (laughs) amusing myself and amusing the muses on Sundays. Amusing I, the muses is your job, babe. I love that. Oh, Kim, I love that. Thank you. Yeah. It's all yours. <laughs> so talking to muses, I'm going to give you another question. Actually, it's funny because it's going to be Susan's again. Okay. It says, do you write to music or do you need complete silence? I need complete silence. I get so easily Finally. distracted. You are the only author that has told me yeah. that they don't have a million writing playlists. And I, I can know. never understand, I can't understand how it. people can write with music in the background because I'd be like, I'd be writing the song lyrics if I was yeah. trying to do that. I get very easily distracted. I can, Maybe if it's classical music, very low, but that would be the extent of it. Uh, when right, I was writing they, the first book, The Sand Prince, uh, which is right here. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a desk or an office or anything. I had just lost my job, my broadcasting job. So it was on the couch and the couch ended up with like a dip in it from my butt being in it every day for a year and a half. And they were doing construction uh, above my head. I live in an apartment building. And so I didn't have music, but I did have the sounds of people throwing two by fours at the floor as hard as they could all day long for like eight months. (laughs) And after that, I was like, no, we need the cone of silence around me while I'm writing. But yeah, it says it. All the other authors are just like, they have these amazing playlists and playlists for this book mm-hmm. and playlists to get into yeah. the character's mindset. And I'd be, I'd be so distracted. 
so particularly if there's lyrics i listen to the lyrics i end up writing i know i mean i don't write but i would end up writing the lyrics because yeah. i get very yeah so that the answer to that question is I, no. after being in broadcasting for so many years i can't stand the sound of the human voice i just want quiet and i get that yeah totally get that Okay, right, so Marty says, if you weren't writing, what would your dream job be? And do you ever insert elements of your own personality into the characters? Uh, let's talk about dream jobs first, because uh, yeah. I actually had uh, the dream job. I worked at Sirius the XM, Sirius? The, uh, the satellite radio company for almost 10 years, started out as a traffic reporter, which is the opposite of a dream job. Uh, it was yeah. so boring and so hard that all you do is try and figure out how not to be a traffic reporter anymore. And I was lucky enough to get an upgrade and I wound up co-programming book radio, which played full length audio books and author interviews. So my job was reading books and talking to authors. Wow. Uh, so I got interviews with, like I, I think I said earlier, every, just about, not everyone, but just about every author you can think of, particularly genre authors. And we did a lot of thriller authors, uh, science fiction and fantasy. Uh, I got most of those. My partner got most of the nonfiction. But they also did things like they sent me to Comic Con every year. They sent me to the Miami Book Fair. They sent me to Book Expo. So for like eight years, that was my life. And that was an amazing job. I would have died happily at my desk, but uh, they ended up taking the channel off the air, going in a different direction. That was the end of that job. But they gave me a nice big severance package. So well, that was good. Yeah, so thank you, Sirius XM. Uh, yeah, without you, these fun. books would not have been possible. So, so that was my that, dream job. There was so, th and now, now writing is also my dream, my other dream job. So I feel very, very fortunate. Have you gone back to any of the conventions as an author then? Because that must be a very different experience doing it. It is. Yeah. Um, the other I, side. I uh, try to remember. I haven't been to any of the cons. Uh, but I went to Book Expo, a couple of the Book Expos and Book Cons as an author, and marched around all day until my feet fell off like everybody else. Um, so there's, some, there's definitely something to be said for both of them. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I went from one dream job to another. I think I'm a very That's fortunate awesome. person. Yeah. That's and as far awesome. as my personality, I think you have to, if you're going to like breathe the puff of magical life into these characters, they have to have just a little sliver of you somehow, even the villains, maybe especially the villains. Uh, you I was, get to I look was at writing those... it be especially the villains. I, yeah, I'm I mean, all about a villain. I, they they, they have a, maybe a part of you that you're not proud of or that you don't like to show to the light. This is your opportunity to, you know, dust them off and shine a little light on that part of your personality. But, I, 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 you know, they're not me. I don't have any, like, Mary Sue's, as they say, which I hate that expression. I've never heard that. <laughs> uh, Mary Sue is an old, like, uh, slash fiction expression. Uh, Mary ah. Sue is a character that's like a direct... Uh, stand in for the author yeah. it's, it's uh, like the character that does everything perfectly and all the men fall in love with her and uh, it, it was a, sort of a valid criticism at one point but now it's just an yeah. excuse not to put women in pivotal in roles in your fiction yeah. um, that's really interesting I've never seen I've learned you never heard that expression I've yeah, never heard that expression, but that's that's not really that far out there I mean my experience, I, I haven't been to book cons and everything mm -hmm. I'm definitely more I'm a reader and yeah, yeah so you'd have no reason to know that. So although I've had lots of yeah. connections with the other, it's just never come up. I think because a lot of the authors that I've worked with, it just hasn't been a thing. I, yeah. I very much live in the realm of sort of fantasy, science fiction, paranormal romance. So not having, like, I, there's nowhere I can say, oh yeah, that's that's obviously a reflection of the author Yeah, in there. But I would definitely be a villain. I'd be like, all of my characters would be bad. I'd have no good characters. Like, well, you like, know, they're, they're, why would... I don't think anybody is either completely good or completely bad because then you've just got somebody who's so mustache twirling villain that, you know, the character, they're not relatable at all. That would you be are me. not. No, that you're would not. Be. Seriously, yeah, that they would have be to me. have a, no, they have to have a reason for their villainy. They have to have no. some little chink of something. No. No, you just like being evil for the sake of being yeah, evil. You like I, totally being evil. I do not think the villains need to have reason. This is, I, I know I sit in my own little bubble with this, but I do not feel, especially strong women, bad guys i feel that they're always being justified especially on tv i mean yeah in books, which maybe but especially on tv i feel that strong women characters that are doing bad things and just being bad the writers always come up with some tragic story as to why they've done that it's like why can't they just be a bitch that's maybe you know what you're, you're right well that can that can be the reason for their villainy is they 
they're not appreciated in their own time. Uh, I'm working on the one I'm working on right now has a, a very nasty woman character. Yay. And she's got her reasons that you may not agree with them. Uh, you know, they may not be sympathetic reasons, but she, hell yeah, she's got her reasons. Um, see, non-sympathetic reasons. I'm on board with that. It's just the, I don't know, there's a lot of things where they're just like, oh, she had like, ab- she was abused or it's, yeah. it's always abused. There's always a bit, or they have someone come in and abuse her, which no you know, no hard, hard pass make I, her I I it's like, no. no i don't i don't like that i i i'm very right? careful about what i do to my characters and yeah. you can do horrible shitty nasty miserable things that are not related to sexual abuse or stuff right. like that i don't like to write about that stuff good i don't, I don't like to read that stuff so yeah. give me all the smutty stuff i'm good with that but mm-hmm. no i mean there's ways you can torture your character psychologically that has nothing to do with that kind of abuse yeah, big fan. I mean, I'm all in favor of torturing my characters. <laughs> Don't get me yeah. wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't have a very interesting book if none of your characters got tortured at all, even a little right. bit. That'd be a very boring book. That'd be a, Correct. a Sweet Valley High. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, somebody asked about that. There was a question about happy ever after. It's like, yeah. uh, uh, I can't find who did. Um, do you prefer to have a happy ever after or just let the chips fall where they may? Well, in the romance writing community, you have to have yeah, happy ever it, after. It's... That's really important. Yes. They will hunt you down if you yes. don't have a happily ever after. I don't consider myself a romance writer. No. I'm, I consider myself a speculative fiction writer, either epic okay. fantasy or paranormal romance. It's more paranormal than it is romance, to be perfectly honest. There's a, there's a romance at the center of it, but that's not really what the story is about. The Got story it. is about in pure and new world magic is the story of uh, Ruby, the, the young woman who's the center of the story, uh, learning to live with some things that happened to her in her life. Um, and she happens to have a romance along the way. So I don't feel tied to happily ever after. I'm on the other hand, that. on the other hand, you don't <laughs> want to tease a relationship and then you no. know, shit on your readers by just not following through no. or tearing them apart when it seems obvious through the whole book that they need to be together. Right. I think I would I would go happily eventually. Yeah, that's good. Ever I like that. Do you find that you're kind of boxed then? If you said, because you said it's paranormal romance, is it because like paranormal doesn't really have its own genre out there? Is it, you can't just say paranormal. You have to be paranormal and right. fit into a box. Yeah. Yeah. Paranormal romance and urban fantasy. Uh, there's so much, mo- there's so much content. There's so many books. Right. There's so many people writing it. Uh, but it's sort of considered rather niche, I think, at this point. It's either a part of science fiction or a part of fantasy right. or a part of romance. It's not its own. It's not thing. its own thing. And what you're yeah. saying is like you've got paranormal and yes, there's some romance going on, but the romance isn't necessarily the main yeah. story. That's like happening because that's what happens with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's really interesting. I like that. I do find that boxes are very annoying. And I do yeah. find that it's really hard because I know authors have to, you have to tick boxes to a certain extent. You have to say, you have to make a decision when you're listing on Amazon, for example, yes. where you want that book to mm-hmm. list. And if you don't get those keywords correct, you're leaving money on the table right and you uh, to be you know have to be fair to your audience they have to know more or less what they're getting into which reminds me of something that uh a mistake that i made early on um i wrote a blurb for the sand prince which made it sound like a romantic comedy like (gasps) it is it's got romance in it and it's definitely got comedy in it but it is not a romantic comedy at all and people were pissed uh i got really really angry remarks I can believe my it. reviews. So we actually pulled the book. This was just after it first came out. Okay. We pulled the book and obviously pulled the blurb and did a little reworking and made it very clear that it's got genocide and murder and poisoning and it's a portal fantasy and bad parenting and really bad hangovers and poor decision making. Oh, and then there's a lovely fa- a romance you know, if you wade through all that other stuff. But it's hard because you have to put in the blurb and we don't want, as readers, we don't want spoilers in the blurb. Right. But there's so many things now where they want disclosures for, does it have this in it? Does that, if, you yeah. read every, if you fill out all those disclosure forms, you're not even going to, you're going to know what happens in the story. Mm-hmm. Where's the, yeah. I like, no, to be sur- I like to be surprised, but on the other hand, if I pick up a book that I think is going to be a romantic comedy and right. I feel misled, then I'm going to be angry and rightly so. Those people were correct. I yep. screwed up, so I had to fix it. And I did. So that's just though. once again, that's why blurbs are so super important. But you have Kate now and Kate does awesome blurbs. Kate does awesome work. Hi, Kate Reynolds. Hi. Are you ready for another question? Let's yeah, absolutely. Diving. Let's do another it. question. What do we got? Oh, if you could live in any book, 
and leave at will or go back and stay whenever you wanted with no consequences, That's what the best book part. would it be? Well, I mean, who wouldn't want to visit the elves in Lothlorien? Me. I the most beautiful place in the world. <laughs> Um, I don't have to worry about going into the West or getting eaten by an orc or something. I mm -hmm. just go wander around and wear a magnificent gown and, you know, hang out with the elves for a while and live in the tree houses. Yeah, that's that sounds like uh, my jam right there. There you go. Yeah. Um, there you uh, I was an early adopter of Tolkien. <laughs> that's all right. It's like, yeah. yeah. It would not be for me. I would not be an elf person, but it's okay. I've dressed up as an elf before, but... Well, where would you, where'd you go? Where would I go? Yeah. Um... If I could go anywhere, ooh, ooh, turning the tables, Kim. I know. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I could go anywhere, mm, I think it would be a toss up between Pern and uh, Balibran. Because when I was growing up, I wanted to be a crystal singing dragon rider. Of and course. Fun fact, I have perfect pitch. So I was always on the ball that I could go and be a crystal singer. And I think I'd be good at that. I <laughs> so can't sing. I can't sing at all. Oh, I can't carry. I'm lucky I can talk. Uh, I can't sing at all. So I'd probably be like cleaning the stables, the dragon stables or something. And then like, <laughs> the, but if you got a pun, you get to be a dragon rider. And I just automatically assumed that, yeah, I would obviously be a dragon rider and they would choose me. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Good choice. Yeah, I think it would be a toss up between those. Those are probably my two, two worlds that have never sort of left me through mm -hmm. all the years. Although there's plenty of places I would love to pop in and just like, just look around. Yeah. But I would probably end up getting killed. If, yeah. You know. Eaten by an orc. Yeah. Something like that. So, oh, we're going to switch it up. Here we okay. go. Dana sure. Stevenson. Dana Stevenson would like to know, who is someone famous that you would like to meet, dead or alive? Well, I, I would prefer alive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're yeah. given the choice. <laughs> I mean, dead um, or I've, alive, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I'm alive, alive. Uh, I've already met so many of my writing that. hearoes. I mean, I, right. I've interviewed like Stephen King and Neil Gaiman, Anne Rice, Sean <gasps> Harris, um, Anne McCaffrey's son, um, Catherine Neville. I'm looking at my bookshelf right now. <laughs> right Mayville. Um, wow. I talk, got to George, George R. R. Martin, talked to him. I'm so jealous. Uh, they're I'm lovely jealous. people. Yeah, they're, they're lovely people. And they, as I said before, all very generous with their thoughts <sighs> and... Uh, but if I had to pick somebody who's not alive anymore, I would love to have lunch with like Jane Austen. Well, um, yeah. I thought that was going to be a chore until my friend, I, I, I was in my 20s already, said, you have to read Sense and Sensibility. I'm not giving you a choice. And it was really funny. And yeah, I was so it surprised. It so is that's funny. what uh, I'd love to get drunk with Jane. I think that would be very cool. Yeah. Very cool. You just listed off so many people. I'm so in awe. I mean, Anne Rice is one of my top, like, all time. Anne McCaffrey you, um, actually used to write back and forth with my dad when oh, my nice. dad was writing a book back in the day. But Neil Ga I love Neil Gaiman. I think he's the funniest person and he's he so generous great. on Twitter. Yeah, he's, um, he's, they were, they're all really, I had great experiences oh. with, all, with all of them. And I was so nervous going in, especially the first time I interviewed Neil Gaiman, it was over the phone. And I was, I thought I was literally going to have a heart attack. I was like, I can't do this. And I got on the phone with him and he's got that lovely accent, as you know. And the first like maybe five minutes was just me in my head going, don't freak out don't freak out. Everything's fine. Don't freak out. But he was so kind and, and calm. And we had a great conversation. I've talked to him a couple of times since then. That's and, really nice. Uh, he's, oh, he's I would terrific. love to talk to him. I've never spoken to him. He's, like, yeah. I, he's definitely on my bucket list of people mm -hmm. I would love to yeah. talk about. I'm actually, we're going to have um, a Good Omens giveaway coming up. Oh, the cool. Funko Pops have come out. Oh, nice. And we're going to be I've mentioned this a couple of, my muses are going to be like, when? When are you having this giveaway? Because you mentioned it on the other one too. Jeez. I have the Funko Pops. I have the, the ones that are meant to be given away, but my personal set haven't come in yet. And I'm telling you flat out, if this personal set don't come in, we get the giveaways They're off. now. <laughs> giveaways off because I'm not I'm not parting with them. Just my muses know that they'd be like, yeah, that sounds like now. She's she's a bit evil, right? See, I told you, evil. See, evil, evil. Clearly, okay. Well, what do we got here? They did Ali's. Oh, Ashley Brolinski. She had a few questions. If you won an all expenses paid vacation to any country in the world, where would you go? That is an easy one. I would go back to Thailand. We went so there. So you've been to Thailand and you've been, been there. Uh, went there a couple of years ago and uh, it was the most beautiful, the warmest, hottest. It was hot as balls. I'm not going to lie. It was hot. 
Um, but the people are lovely and the food is amazing. And I, it was just a life-changing and incredible experience. Plus you get a beer that's like this big for 30 Oh, cents. my husband will be all about that. Yeah, because the exchange rate right now is quite favorable to the US dollar. That has been for a really long time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's an incredibly beautiful, uh, lovely, kind country full of lovely, beautiful, kind people. Uh, wow. Probably my second choice would be Venice. Mm. Mm-hmm. I've been to Venice, it smells. I loved Venice. We went there on my honeymoon. It was oh it was so beautiful. Did you not think that it's? I think it smells. It smell, I, I have a real what time of year. Around. Did you did you go in the summer? Yeah, I understand. It's this canals get stinky in the summer. Yeah, we, the canals. We went in in early May and it was still cool and it was lovely. See, that's probably the thing because I see it and they never show that on the television. Like when you're watching it, it's all like that. And I think it is beautiful. I mean, mm-hmm. the architecture is yeah. stunning and the views are stunning. But... So weird. It reminded me. I lived in Key West for a long time, and it just that's being Florida, right. In Florida, it's the very end of Florida. Um, and just being so tied to the, the ocean, uh, it reminded me of, of Key West a little bit in a strange sort of way, but yeah. Hmm. So those, Thailand first, then Venice. Those Thailand, are my places. Then Venice. Okay. Hmm. So uh, let's go. Shannon says, what is your favorite dessert? We're gonna put some, do some brands and stuff. Uh, as I just mentioned, Key West, um, I make a very good key lime pie, which reminds me of home. So that's, that's one of my favorite desserts. So you make it? That's, that's yeah, your I like to bake. I, I've started baking since the pandemic, like everybody else in the damn world, uh, except you. <laughs> um, we, my husband and I both work from home. So uh, we did, somehow managed not to murder each other this whole time. That's so pretty, and, yeah. Good try but we that. like to make big, stupid, elaborate meals. And I've recently started baking and key lime pie. I like to eat big, stupid, elaborate meals. Come on over, honey. Come on. Come Does on I'll make you dinner. Come. I'm a fan of food. I'm not going to apologize for that. No, nor should you. <laughs> so what else have we got on here? Oh, who's your favorite? This is from Shannon Watts. Who okay. is your favorite superhero and why? Well, we already mentioned Neil Gaiman. So let's talk about Sandman. Okay. Uh, Batman that's going to be coming to Netflix. Are you excited I, about that? Beside myself, I can't wait. Uh, I I loved the the uh, this. I mean, superhero sort of it verges on the very border of what you consider a superhero. Um, I'm in it. I'm in. I'm in it with you. Yeah. All right. I mean, I, I liked X Men. I, I read the, all the X Men books. My ex husband collected comic books, and I was like, well, if, if I'm going to be in this relationship, I guess I got to read some comic books. And I read all the X Men books, and that was fun. Uh, but then I got uh, into Vertigo, which uh, had Sandman and some of the other more edgy at the time titles. And I started reading Sandman. I was like, this is this is genius. This is, it's this really is literature. Good. This is beautiful. I'm much less interested in space battles and, you know, invading aliens and giant robots than I am in what we do to each other psychologically. And that was what Sandman really was about. So yeah. Sandman and the Endless, they would be my favorite superheroes. I think that's brilliant. I love how unusual that answer is. And if you guys don't know who that is... You should, because we mentioned Neil Gaiman quite a lot. We yeah. mentioned when we talk about Lucifer. I mean, obviously, I'm a yeah. huge Lucifer fan. That was like, right. that's one of my major fandoms. So your music should all know. And if not, go look up Sermon and read those because they're epic. And they're coming to Netflix. So <laughs> I'm so excited. I know. And Neil Gaiman's between... like hand in the casting too. Yeah. So that's what I'm really excited about. Because he wouldn't give up the right. Like, he's like, no, I want control over what they're going to be doing to these characters. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you go, Neil. I'm with yeah, you. Absolutely. So many have been ruined. Yeah, uh, between uh, Sandman and Dune, the Dune movie, I'm like, let's get on with it. I can't wait for that. Are you um, excited I'm, for the new Dune movie? Oh, that's that. That book probably had more of an influence on my writing uh, than, than any other. I think that I can think off the top of my head, along with maybe two or three other books. But everything I learned about world building, uh, I got out of Dune. Um, just Excellent. Frank Herbert's book. The, it's just the, the brilliance, um, the 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 Bible, and you know the the uh, the ecology, everything. That's that's when, when I sit down to build a world. That's that's the scope that I I don't succeed. I don't think, oh, maybe not yet at this point in my career. But that's that's the level I'm shooting for. Um, I, mean, in those yeah, books. I mean, the fantasy. I mean, that's where the fantasy, the epic fantasy series, sort of comes in. I mean, that is all world building. Yeah, all of that stuff and. I think that's amazing. I would never have, I can tell you right now, I would never have the patience for all of that. I, I loved it. That was the, that was the fun part. I think you have um, to love it. I think you, you have, have to love to. it. Yeah. I mean, the, the really, to. the really fun part uh, for the epic fantasy series was uh, writing the creation myth for this world that I had created and, and their own myths and legends and stories and the names of the stars and the names of the moons and stuff. Uh, I got to play God. Who wouldn't want to do that? It was amazing. Yeah, fun fact, Neil Gaiman voice God on the Lucifer episode. Yes. 
random fun facts. And then they don't have him back. I was so disappointed that they're not having him back to play God in the in the new one. But eh, you know, Shabby. Okay. Oh, so Demon Door series is that the is that the epic fantasy one, the Sand Prince one? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, Gladys would like to know how did you come up with the idea for the Demon Door series? It seems like a good time to throw that question at you. Um, the idea for the Demon Door came back while I was still working at XM and I just got an image like a, a, a frame from a movie hmm. of two young people sitting at a campfire like in the woods and it was dark and there's a little campfire but I kept seeing it I don't know where it came from and to this day I don't but I was like I kept returning to it and I kept like picking at it and like what does this mean the woman was a, a young woman she was wearing a white party dress with her white hair all pinned up and very fancy sitting in the middle of the woods at, in, at, next to this campfire uh, across from this very beautiful young man who had red eyes. I was like, I knew that he had kidnapped her, but I also knew that she wasn't afraid of him. So that was all I knew about this image that popped into my head. And finally, uh, around the time that I got rid of that job, <laughs> lost it, um, I went to my friend's cabin in Louisiana, north of New Orleans, and there was nobody around, it was really quiet. And I got a notebook and I like practically filled the notebook over the course of four days of just notes and thoughts that I had about these people, who they were, where they came from, uh, why they were sitting out there in the middle of the woods, what was their relationship, what were their names? And it turned into this four book series. Uh, it just kept going like this. See, that's really interesting because you said before that you you heard a lot of stuff and yet yeah. this whole series sort of spawned from an image. Yeah, that's the only time that's ever happened. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's pretty yeah, awesome. That's a, I mean, it's that's awesome, a good point. but it, it's really crazy because it's, but it was obviously meant to be. I mean, you've got four book epic fantasy series. So mm -hmm. kudos to that. Wow. That's, I find stuff like that absolutely fascinating. It's like how it all works in people's I'd heads. love to know, honestly, where, where it comes from. Where the, you know, where, where do your ideas come from? I wish I knew. Hmm. Always have it. And as is often the case. <laughs> yeah. So, do you plan to write in um, any more in the New World Magic series? Are there any side characters getting a novella? That's another one from Gladys. Well, as a matter of fact, um, there are two more books coming out, um, probably more, after, almost certainly more after that, since there's a lot of plot left to resolve. Um, I wrote, funnily, I, I wrote the first two books, Pure and The March Effect, and then I wrote the next book in the series, uh, which is called The Great Shatter. And my editor, Carly, read this book and she pulled out two chapters and she said, these don't belong in this book. You need to write another book that happens between the events of books two and three. And I said, no, I don't. And she said, no, you really do. If your editor, said, I'll tell you right now, if your editor is telling you that, then your editor is 100% right. Editors do not get enough credit for picking up on that stuff. But if she, I tell you right now, if she's telling you that, mm -hmm. your editor is right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story about my editor, Carly, in a minute, but do, let me just do. wrap this up. Yeah. So, she convinced me to do it. And I asked a bunch of other people. And of course, they all agreed with Carly because Carly is always right. So I had these two chapters and I had to extrapolate a whole book, which I hadn't intended to write about characters that I didn't know as well as I know the characters from the main series. So this book took me, I started working on it in earnest like last September. And now it's finally gone out to beta readers last week and it'll probably go to Carly next week. It. I can tell you right um, now it would be worth it. It's, I... It was such a good idea. I know these characters so well now that I'm going to have to do a lot of reworking for book four, obviously, because it was essentially finished. But it's going to be so much of a better book because yep. I know the world now so much better and the characters so much better. So I guess the moral of the story is always listen to your editor. Yeah. See, <laughs> anyway, I uh, the third book will be out late spring and the fourth right. will, will be out in the fall, hopefully. It'll be worth it. Yeah, See, I, I so alpha too. read and I'm very indignant. If, like, I'm very, very, like, you need to listen to what I'm saying with stuff because for whatever reason, it sounds like your editor is the same way. If they're picking up on something, if they're telling you it because they love you and they love your book mm -hmm. and there's a good reason. So you obviously got a really good editor. So your editor is Carly. Carly Hayward. She works for Booklight. Booklight. And you can definitely put up the link. She's I'm a to marvelous yeah. editor. Uh, the day I met her uh, was I was uh, I went to see Mad Max Fury Road that day, and I got a call from Carly that evening, and she left a message on my cell phone saying, "I understand you're looking for an editor. Perhaps we can work together." So in my mind, Furiosa and Carly are like this. <laughs> <laughs> so 
she's fantastic. Um, she's so smart. She knows she knows when I'm lazy, when I'm doing lazy writing. She catches everything. Uh, she gives me an attaboy when I need it. Uh, but I'm I'm a self-published author. Um, mm -hmm. I had a, a publisher that went out of business, and I decided to continue as a self-published author. Um, the most important thing and the biggest piece of advice I can give to anyone who is considering being self-published, get yourself a good editor is, I is because you're agree worth every penny. With, I cannot agree with you enough on that. And I see, I see as a reviewer and you can tell, you can tell. When, when you haven't got it. If you're not, if, if you don't really invest in anything else, I'm going to 100% agree with you. If you don't invest in anything mm -hmm. else, please invest in a good editor. They are worth every penny. And the reason that they are expensive is because they are really good and they will make right. your book shine. Yes, absolutely. And you said, you know, you spoke to Carly and, you know, everything like that. That's what you should do. You know, talk to people are going to have different styles and different people are going to work great with different people mm -hmm. yeah if you may not like the not first one they're like therapists they may not be the right fit for the first one you have to right. make sure you find the right one and when you find the right one they're golden the other thing yeah. i would suggest people invest a little extra money in is the cover covers those two things yep i'm the covers and 100 on board yeah. with that covers and editors and like you said shop around find one that's find somebody who works mm -hmm. for you because it should be like a matter you should mesh really really well yeah and different authors need different things from the editors, but edit, don't skip on the editing and don't skip on your covers. Right. Sound advice. All of you authors out there, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's mainly non authors that are watching this, but hey. Okay, what other questions do I have down here? Ooh, we did that one, we did that one, we did that one. Oh, if you had an elemental power, I think this is from Ashley. Yeah, I had to turn the page. I got them printed out so I didn't forget any of them. Um, if you had an elemental power, which element would it be? Um, that assumes that I don't. That is a very good answer. <laughs> I like that answer. If I had an elemental power, I would love to control, uh, gosh, everything. I mean, uh, I was going to say the weather because it's kind of crappy and, and rainy today. But then I'm like, no, I think men's minds need to be controlled more. Do you think that counts as an elemental power, though? It's like when I hit elements, I think like earth, fire, water. Wind. Well, if I don't agree with people, I set them on fire. See, I'm, I'm all about the fire. Is that an elemental power? <laughs> fire, yeah. Fire. You, just, uh, you just answered it for yourself. Yeah, if I don't even think <laughs> that's a better plan, it'll be fire then. We'll Let's go, go with fire. fire. Let's go with fire. Fire, it's cool. I like, I'm a big fan of fire, as general elements go. So, oh, Dana Stevenson says, are there ever hidden things in your book that only certain people might know about? It's sort of bounces really nicely back to Easter eggs and things. Yeah, um, it's funny. Easter eggs, uh, sometimes I will think to myself, this person has to be wearing a blue t-shirt in the book. The character, they have to be wearing, I don't, I don't know why, but you know, my subconscious is very emphatic. And then like 300 pages later, there'll be like this Im totally important reason why that character was wearing a blue t-shirt. It works every time. I don't know why. Again, I don't know where these things come from, but I, it's like I'm leaving Easter eggs for myself almost when I write sometimes. <laughs> but as far as people uh, in the books, knowing who they are, I, I definitely like to write my friends into my books. Do you, and then, do you like and to them off? I murder them horribly. Yeah, I've done that a couple of times. I love that. I yeah. definitely. Well, I, I I volunteer to be. Okay. All right. I volunteer to be murdered or horribly in a book. I also volunteer to be the really evilest character ever. I will. Be, <laughs> you you know you will know you when you see you. I love that. Okay. I'm definitely Deal. a big big fan of that. I do love that. I love when people write them in, and I love the fact that you're like, yeah, I do. I put them in there and kill them. All. No problem. You're in. You're in. That's very exciting for me. I'm such a geek. I know. I'm not sorry though. So, oh, somebody says, oh, this is a good one. I'm not familiar with your books, so mm -hmm. forgive me if my questions seem random. I didn't see who wrote this one. I've just got it. I've got question marks next to it, so I don't know who wrote that. So it just popped up. So it says, I see that you do magic and fairy tale stuff, and I'm very interested. How intense do your books get? Are they dark or are they more lighthearted? So that might mix up between the series too yeah um they're they're both i mean they go to dark places you know okay. bad things happen to the characters i said earlier you've you've got to plunge them into the fire in order to see what comes out on the other side otherwise you know you don't really have something people are going to remember or want to finish okay. but um i think you have to sprinkle a lot of humor on top of that kind of thing um a lot Do you of think your humor is dark Do you, would you consider your humor dark humor or hmm I, know I, don't, I don't really, no, I don't, I wouldn't say, okay. 
you know, no, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say no. I don't think I, I have mean, a, yeah, a dark. Say, you're, you said, well, <laughs> yeah, I had to, I had to go, no. Oh, is it dark? Uh, no, I, I don't think it's a particularly dark sense of humor, but I think if you have very dark things happening, you know, you have to leaven that with something or else it's just right. too grim. And again, nobody's going to want to slog through it. I don't want to make it homework. That's a little, <laughs> yeah. So I think I pretty much got through most of them. Oh, if you get writer's block, do you have something that you can do or ritual that you do that sort of opens the communication channels back up for you? Yeah, like I like I said, um, that falling asleep moment is is yeah is good. You can't really do that at two o'clock in the afternoon in your office, depending on where you work. Um, I mean, two o'clock in the afternoon in my office, I absolutely it is nap time. Good. <laughs> I probably wouldn't because it wouldn't be very comfortable. But yeah, it's like one of the nice things about my office is yeah, I probably could. Probably could. But when I when I when a scene isn't working, uh, I do a couple of different things. I flip the perspective. Sometimes a different point of view character will unlock it. Uh, but if it's really not working, uh, and I, I'll just let it sit and go back and start re-editing stuff that I've already written. Uh, some people don't do that. They write beginning to end. I don't work that way. So by the time Carly actually gets my manuscript, the first couple of chapters have been like reworked 800 times and the end of the book has been gone over like twice. So that's interesting because this is a question that nobody asked this time because they're like, Mel probably just ask it anyway. And I'm going to, okay. are you a plotter or a pantser? My husband hates that word. He swears this is not Pantser? We went <laughs> over it. We went over it on the live on Sunday. It's like, yeah, this is a thing. Pantser is a thing. So are you a plotter or a pantser? I started out by being 100% pantser. I had no idea how to write a book. I didn't know what I was doing. I read a lot of books, gotten some good advice. Uh, I knew what a book was supposed to sound like and look like, uh, but I did not do any of the outlining or anything like that. Uh, the Demon Door series, the fantasy series has over 40 named characters, it takes place on two worlds and has two timelines. I do not recommend pantsing that sort of project. It was a mistake. I had to go back about midway through the second book and break everything down and that's when the post-it notes came out. <laughs> I had the murder wall with the string and the post-it notes. I can believe it. One hundred percent believe it. Some of these. So now I do these... sort of a, a hybrid. Um, I usually will very roughly outline. This is the beginning. This is the end. This is what needs to happen. But I'm per perfectly willing, and in fact, ex expect things to change along the way. And I'm not mad when I throw the outline out the window and go in a different direction. I just have to have sort of a superstructure to build the bridge on or build the words on. Okay, I think I actually got through most of the questions. Okay. Um, is there anything you want to, uh, that we haven't covered that you want to get out there before I do the little wrap up? Um, no, we, we, you know, we, my phone's making noise. Let me get rid of oh. it. Into the toilet with you. <laughs> um, you know, I'm in, uh, can we give, give, give a couple of uh, ebooks away? Can we do that? Or oh even God, real books? You, yeah. You can, you can give. My my muses would love that. We're all about giveaway. What do you prefer? Uh, uh, what do you prefer to, to give away, or doesn't it matter? I don't care. I would say book ones. Um, are you book right one to of each one? one because of um, that's a great way to get people started. Yeah. Also, if you give away later books, sometimes they get pushed to the side until yeah. you even get to. Book all right. One. Well, why don't we give away a physical copy of book one of each series? <gasps> And I'll, okay. I'll mail them out since I'm allowed to go. To, I got both vaccines. I'm allowed to go to the post office again, bitches. <laughs> so there you go. So you heard it here first. Um, well, I heard it here first. Kim is going to give away a paperback copy of The Sand Prince and a paperback copy of Pure to two different winners. Can we do two, two different, different winners. winners. Let's do two, two people. Two different, uh, two different winners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a raffle cop to give away. Okay. And I'll put the link for that in the um, description for the video. So click that and you're going to need to put in two code words. So pay attention, guys, to win pure. It's going to say code words and you're going to put March. And for the Sam Prince, you are going to put movie, which sounds really weird. But Kim said earlier on, if you were paying attention, she had that movie screen That's right. in her head. Someone so was paying attention. I pay attention. I pay attention. So, yeah. So for pure, you're going to put March. And for Sam Prince, you're going to put movie. And those will be the two keywords. And don't put them in the comments of this video because people need to watch the video to find it out. That's how this works. And then, yeah, we got two chances. Two chances to win. Fabulous. Okay. Fantastic. So, I'm going to do a wrap up. So huge. Thank you, Kim. Huge. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me on my show today. It. It's been Anytime. awesome. 
As always, if you've enjoyed this video, please do all the fun YouTube things, like, comment, and subscribe, especially comment. Let Kim know what you thought of everything, if you're going to grab the books. If you have any qu other questions, you know, drop them down there, and I'll poke Kim on Facebook if she doesn't get over here to see them and all of that stuff. So, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Share with it. The giveaway. Share. share the giveaway. Share everything. Share it all. If you think this looks like fun hanging out with me, you should join me on Facebook every Sunday at noon Eastern time with my husband, Greb. We have giveaways. We have giveaways. We talk TV. We talk books. We talk movies. Sometimes we're in costume or I'm in costume. And sometimes it's just crazy, but it's always crazy. If you're a cool person and you want to chat with us, you should be there. All the cool people are there. Muses in the comments. Sunday noon, and, ugh, Sunday noon Eastern time on Facebook. And of course, be heading over to melaniesmusic.com for everything, books, giveaways, guest articles, music articles, everything going on is on melaniesmusic.com. And if it's not up there now, it will be soon because new stuff is being added every single day. And with that, make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss the next time I have a video up. The only thing you can count on in 2021, Melkor Mondays, Forgotten Feature Fridays, Zoom chats with authors when available on a Wednesday and weird and random other videos. As and when I feel like it, click the notification bell, you won't miss them. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye. There it is. There it is. We are live. Okay, we're not live, but we're recording. I'll try to remember to look at the com the camera and not at you. Yeah, it's hard, and most it's of the hard. time, I'll be honest, we end up looking like at each other. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. Because you're talking to somebody. It's what you yeah. expect. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Perfect. I'm definitely not a big. Let me take a quick drink of water. Okay. Well, if you're doing that, I'm gonna grab. I'll edit this bit out and put it at the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They'll be like, "Wow, they did really well with this talking," and then we're having one drink break. It's all at the end. Fan of uh, that's probably why I don't read too much traditional romance. Mm -hmm. When I say I don't read too much, it's like probably this this percentage, yeah. and they tend to be books that are like Hallmark movies. Um, Lee Duncan, who actually writes for Hallmark, she writes romances like for Hallmark that could be on the book. And you know, you know what you're getting with that. It's cooking. Yeah. This is going to happen and everything. So if I just want something like that, I'm happy with it. But for my other books, I don't want everything. I, I'm not a big fan of. You don't want the tidy little, after. yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of bows. I'm not a big fan, well, other than mine, but I'm not a big fan of everything being wrapped up. And right. sometimes I like to imagine the, how I, you know, just like put it out there and things, they're obviously going to go off and do things after the book is done. Just let us as readers sometimes have a little say in that. And don't just, and shocking, I'm a big fan of, I'm not, because I hate, I hate crying. Crying? I hate crying at books. I hate books that make me cry. Oh. Like really hate them. Thought, she hates when characters cry. No, I hate I hate when books make me cry. And oh, I'm, I love I'm, that. I love get that it that visceral oh, intensity. I love no, that. I hate that. I hate books that make me cry. I hate TV shows that make me cry. I be, I mean, I it's like a love hate relationship. But the the books that make me cry, and I will actively avoid things if I really think they're going to make me cry. Aww. But <laughs> I do. I'm like, no, I'm terrible. Cry. Greg's made me cry live on the show. I mean, that that's the sort of husband I live with. It's like. <laughs> It's terrible. But yeah, that whole thing. And there are a couple of books that I've read that have really like sideswiped me. And I've been like, you know, I might be mad as a, but I really respected that as the author. I was like, yes, do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I have read books that I have agreed to take on for reviews, uh -huh. like, especially back in the day when I was starting, I would read everything that anybody mm -hmm. would send me. Right. That you know what I'm talking about? Very much like homework. <laughs> Now I'm very blessed that I'm at a place where I can sort of like pick and choose a little bit, Good. which which you get into, which actually what ends up happening is they yeah. When I'm back in, when I was doing all the book reviews, I would uh, read like the first couple of chapters and make a decision based on that. Um, I, I we were pretty new in report in uh, re reviewing books, so I didn't really have the luxury of just tossing stuff aside. Um, but I didn't do any bad reviews. I just there's not enough time in the world to give a shitty review to somebody who sent me a book. I just didn't talk about it. That's, I mean, that's, that's fair enough. Yeah. I tell people, I was like, if, if I agree to read your book, so she, like, back in the day, I was like, I will give you a review, but I can't guarantee it's going to be good. My reviews are honest. Everything on my channel is all honest, is 100% mm -hmm. me and what I'm saying. I would never write a mean review. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some books just don't work with some people. And these could be books that other people absolutely right. love. I can only go by, you know, what I enjoy and... Yeah, when I'm feeling sad, I like to go to Amazon and look for one-star reviews of my favorite books <laughs> of famous authors. 
<laughs> that cheers me up. <laughs> That's really good. There are, it doesn't matter. There's not one book in the world that everybody loves. There's right. just, it's impossible. If you try and please everybody, you end up pleasing nobody. So you I mean, what? I'd rather get a one star review than like a two and a half star review. I'd rather make somebody angry. Like, yeah, this was, rather than go. Yeah, it was all right. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, I completely appreciate that because it's like, at least they have an opinion. It's an opinion yeah. then. It's like a strong opinion and you've raised passions and what have you. Rather than Not that I'm it. asking for one star reviews. I'd like to make that very clear. <laughs> Bring on the five star reviews. You know who you are. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> Because it's like, yeah, it's like, let's just clarify this. Do not go give me one star reviews. I'm not asking for one star. I'm not review. asking for that. No. Seriously, one star reviews, you guys really, really hurt Amazon like star ratings and rankings. One star reviews can really, it really hurt. hurt. It hurts. It so that old feel good. adage, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it. Probably should ring true with reviews for the yeah. most part. Agreed. But also, if you give everything five star reviews, Amazon won't post them anymore. So there's that too. Get yourself a good author. It is worth every penny. Good editor. You yeah. say get yourself a good author. We're going to assume that. Did I say author? Get you did. Be a good author. That's the most <laughs> important thing. Oh. I can't. It's a running joke. I can't go. My cooking skills are so bad. That How bad are they? My, my daughter's grown up now, and um, she's off in and she's home right now because of the pandemic. She's doing online courses, but. When she was a cheerleader, they had to sell like the cookie stuff and whatever. Right. So I bought this stupid frozen cookie dough that you literally just had to cut from the freezer and put in the oven. And I couldn't even do that Aww. because the instructions on the packet were wrong. And my husband Aww. was like, he came home and he looked and he's like, well, obviously if you put them in for that long, they're going to be like stone. I was like, okay, directions have one job, one job to tell me how to do it because I don't know how to cook. I'm so, so sorry. That's all right, yeah. I just buy stuff now. My husband has <laughs> Just buy. They just accept the fact that I can't. The only thing I can bake is sausage rolls, which you don't even have in America. So I no, had to don't. learn how to make that, which is basically just sausage meat and puff pastry. So well, that very, sounds delicious. It's very delicious, but that's the only thing I really cook. Everything. Okay, else. we and come over. I'll make. I'll I'll make you key lime pie. You can make me sausage rolls. Okay. And Deal. Turkey dinner. I can do and a turkey, turkey dinner, dinner, which I do randomly because, like, I like big elaborate meals. For no. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're something's working obviously yeah, even something's working i think if you've got that kind of stuff though some people just seem to be very in tune with like a whole other world or whatever and they, mm -hmm. like you said you hear the voices and you can do that mm -hmm. and everything that's not me i can talk about other people's stuff and uh -huh. people say to me oh yeah you should write a book it's like, i would not know where to start writing a book like i don't have the original ideas mine would be end up being some awful fan fiction <laughs> <laughs> there is nothing wrong with that Oh, oh, there is. There, there <laughs> definitely would be. I mean, you're you're thinking of good fan fiction. I'm thinking of very bad fan, like right, One Direction fan. I used to honestly, I used to turn my nose up at fan fiction, uh, but I know it's done so much for so many people, and I've read some really, really good fan fiction. Yeah, there's I'm also sure there's some, some bad fan fiction, some but really there's some good stuff out there that's out there. just brilliant. See, the trouble is, I'm from back in the day, and fan fiction was not generally good good people were not writing fan fiction right. although i have to say i have read um like when amazon did the world series kristen painter had some authors that sort of like dabbled in her world mm -hmm. using her which is like it, it wasn't quite fan fiction but it right. was like the sure, same sort of idea thing. yeah and some of them were really good and some of them were not other things that you could talk about like what tv shows are you watching right now there's always fun because i watch um we just finished watching wandavision okay what do uh, you think i'm uh, I, I I didn't think they stuck quite stuck the landing. Okay. Uh, they have, I was I was left with some questions, but uh, it was and so I understand interesting. They're not going to follow that up. I don't and think so. Like, I don't see how they could. That's it. Um, see, I didn't watch that one, so I'm a DC girl mainly. Fair. Um, but I do watch the new one with Bucky. Oh, that's next, Bucky. Oh, Bucky. It is so good. I'm a huge Sebastian Stan fan, but like young Sebastian Stan, I just recently covered The Covenant as my Forgotten Feature Friday because I love like uh -huh. that. And he does some very weird movies like The Bronze. If you're not easily offended, check out The Bronze. The Bronze? Like the metal? Yeah, like The Bronze. Okay. I'll look for it. It a very, very adult comedy. Let me just say okay. that. It's so uh, right. Definitely recommend that. But yeah, so we just started watching that. Now, I haven't seen the most of the Avengers ones. I've only seen like random ones. So mm -hmm. I haven't seen any of Endgame. I don't understand really what's That's going on right. with, with all the blip. But Falcon and Winter Soldier is so good. Okay. They're bad. Not knowing who everybody is and all the backstory and everything, and you're still enjoying it. 
So yeah, probably... that's it. See, that's it. Although my daughter sits there and she's sort of like edits for me and fills mm-hmm. me in on the the really essential stuff. But their banter is, I can see why, obviously, they saw them together in Avengers and were like, we have to put these two together. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. And I'm not The other thing we've been watching uh, that got remastered and put on HBO is Babylon 5. Oh! Which I hadn't seen since it came out 150 years ago. And that's been real. I mean, the special effects are, you know. You can probably do better on your home, on your phone right now. I'm all about (laughs) cheesy old things with not good effects and whatever that doesn't bother me at all so but uh, the the oh it was one of the first uh arc television series like the wire and sopranos ended yeah. up doing uh this was one of the first that j michael straczynski did and you can see especially since i've watched the whole thing already it's so interesting watching the plot slowly you know right. unfold um so we've been really enjoying that uh and looking at all the ikea furniture and ikea accessories that they use on the sets yeah uh, so we've been enjoying that i mean there's oh stanley tucci in italy i haven't seen that yet is that good <gasps> stanley tucci stanley tucci is a big favorite in this house it's yeah. like we are well you gotta huge... find it it's on cnn he goes oh. all around italy and eats that's all the show is it's so that, good that's something that emily and i will probably mm-hmm. end up yeah and uh, we have a real thing for like stanley tucci it's just like he's he's just so amazing in everything that he does everything like, everything is better when he's in it and this is him in italy just going around talking to people and eating it's beautiful there you go. Yeah, I mean, we can definitely put a link for her. We, I have authors that watch as well. I can put a link to Kate. Does she do this as a business thing or is it just a, she does it as a favor to you thing? She's doing it right now as a favor to me. She's also doing okay. some podcasting. So I'm doing some then audio editing and that yeah. up. But yeah, she's, she's uh, we're, to we're, yeah. Uh, but if she just changes her mind, I'll let you know. Do, let me know. It's great because you're new to me, author, which means you're probably going to be new to a lot of my muses, author. And I'll tell you what, if you can hook a muse fan, I have. My Facebook fandom is small, but mm-hmm. oh my God, they are mighty and they are dedicated. If you can hook one of those, you've got them for life. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to do this. I mean, they this, will be on this is the only way day. to I, I meet love, people. My you know? muses are awesome. I love my muses. I'm I can't so wait glad. to talk to them. I hope they, come, I talk, they yeah. talk to me. Come to live. Come to live on Sunday. I'm in New York, upstate New York. Oh, really? Where? Uh, Rochester. So I'm in Rochester, New York. I'm in, uh, as you know, Washington, D.C. Yeah. Um, we've spent many summers uh, at Lake Cayuga, not too far. Yeah. I kind of know where that is. My geography is terrible. That's okay. I literally only moved here because my husband, I met my husband in an 80s music chat room. And he was like, I'm from Rochester. I was like, well, I'm from Rochester. But I was from Ro- Rochester, England. And then I ended up moving here. We've been That's so years cute. Now. So. Yeah. Uh, Ithaca, you might know. Oh, I, yeah. No, yeah. See, know that one. That, now that's where it is. Okay. Got that. I'm not an outdoorsy person at all. It's like my idea of roughing it is like a hotel that doesn't have room service. That's oh my God. That's my joke. What? No, I say that all the I literally say that all the time. Roughing it is no room service. Uh, that, is, that is what I say all the time. Is like roughing it is like a hotel with no room service. That's my joke idea sisters. <laughs> yeah. Got a bit heavy. Yeah. And click that notification bell so you don't miss the next time I am live. Milk all my, and I'm not live. It's a lie. <laughs> Do you have any questions that you'd like to ask me? You, this is your how, chance. How did uh, how did you get involved in, in doing interviews? Obviously, you've got a real skill for it. Oh, thank you. Um, Where did it come from? Where'd you start? In my head. Literally, uh, here's the funny thing. Back, like, years ago, I'm actually a trained pediatric nurse, like mm-hmm. pediatric emergency nurse. Mm-hmm. And I came over here, and they lost all of my paperwork and whatever. So I went and worked as a wedding consultant, like you do. for Like you do. Like you do, because you know, they go together. <laughs> and I got sick. And um, I have a really weird autoimmune thing that they don't, even now they still don't know what it mm. was. And so I started reading books because I've always been a huge reader. So I started reading books for review. And so that sort of became a thing. And I was doing book reviews and whatever. And then uh, about four or five years ago, there was a thing called Telfy. And it was like Get Glue. You check in on your phone and you unlock stickers which that was what Get Glue was. Telfy took it over. And they mm-hmm. had this thing up, and it was so ridiculous. They're like, if you do a video, you can get free stickers. And so I did a video. And then Telfy approached me, and they're like, oh, my God, you were so good on this video. You should rebrand, do Melanie's Muses, and we will back you. And they did. They, was just, wow. they sort of, like, launched me. And at one point, people could check into Telfy and get stickers of me, which was absolutely That's crazy. crazily bizarre. I love that. 
And that's how it sort of started. And then when I was working with Telfy, I got to interview some awesome people. I got to speak to Joe Henderson, who is the showrunner for Lucifer. Mm-hmm. And then Telfy sort of like went away and Voice of TV went away. And it was like, well, we were doing live. My husband and I started going live. And it was like, okay, what are we going to do next? And we did an interview with Susan Harris, not like this kind of interview, but it was just like different words in England and Ireland and America. And people really like them. They're like, you should do more of those. And then so I interviewed Susan. And then I was like, who else wants an interview? And that's kind of how it started. So there I am. That's how. That's, that's, I love that. That's just such a sideways way. I mean, you know, I went to journalism school and I <laughs> no. <into> here. Nope. <laughs> I love that. No, um, no, I just sort of, I sort of fell into it, I guess. I mean, yeah. the, the live on Sunday was actually my husband's idea. Uh-huh. And originally what it was is the stickers went live on Monday. I had a video up every Monday and Telfy had some issues, but I will tell you that they made me very accountable and I had to have a video up every mm-hmm. Monday to have a sticker every Monday and everything was like in advance and we'd have the themes and whatever. And then all of my husband was like, well, you know, you should go live on Sunday. We did one live so that people could get to know me and talk to me and ask questions. And I was so nervous and so scared. I said, I don't think I can do this. My husband came down with me. He's like, I will read the comments. And the idea was going to be, he sat there and just like read me questions. So I didn't have to try and do the two things. Uh-huh. And now he's completely sold on the show. He's, 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 he doesn't even realize how awesome he is. Like he's, he's just like, I don't know why people come and watch this. It's like your show. I was like, no, people are 100% coming. That's adorable. I love to that. To see you. Uh-huh. But yeah. And the lives were going to be every Sunday. We would talk about my previous video. No one wanted to do that. Everyone was coming up and they just wanted to chat. And so then it just became an hour long chat. And so now every Sunday we have an hour long chat. We have, you know, giveaways. We have a giveaway every week that every comment people make enters them to win a prize and one prize like every week. And then we have like things like at the moment we have this spin the wheel thing where we will spin a wheel live and have to do what pops up on it. So (laughs) that's so funny. (laughs) No, what's funny is I didn't tell my husband when I set it up. So the little pop-ups happened on the TV screen. He had no idea what was going on. Like, none. This people, he's like, what? what is this? And then he was right on the spot because one of the things he had to do was do an impression. <laughs> he's like, Greg has to do an impression of Melanie watching the Bake Off. My boss was just like, I'm hating you right now. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's how I ended up where I am. And um, it's just sort of growing from... Yeah, you've got multiple thousands of people watching these videos. That's fantastic. I, I'm, I'm absolutely in awe of that. I mean, I really am. I, don't, I say all the time, like, why are people coming to watch it? I mean, they're like, well, you know, you're different. Well, obviously, you know, you know your subject. You know what you're talking about. You look great. Yeah. And you've got a passion for what you're doing. I mean, it's, it, it's that sort of organic growth that, that you know, you can't, you can't make something like that. It has to happen. It has to yeah, happen I mean, naturally. And that's what it looks like you're doing. One of the things is I'm, it's very honest. Like my reviews are very, like when I'm talking about a show, I don't always love stuff. We, you know, I don't love everything, but I'm always interested to hear like people will come to me and say, oh, you know, you should watch this. And I will give everything a try. Like mm-hmm. I am up for trying any TV shows and different things. That sounds like a very sensible plan. I mean, that, that sounds like it makes sense because you can still go creativity. Yeah. There. Create. Yeah. It works for me. Yeah. <laughs> so far. <laughs> Glad you got where I was going with that because that word just was like, I knew what you meant, except no, this. Remember. Except in this case, where my my editor was like, "No, there's another book hidden in there." So I love that. I'm yeah. a big fan of that because I I do homeopathy. I I alpha read for a couple of authors, and some of the notes I send back, they're like, "You obsess about the stupidest, weirdest stuff." I'm like, "I'm not going to apologize for that." No, nor should you. That's the kind of beta reading you want. I mean, okay, that's that's so what I'm, I ask my people. Like, what do you hate? What do you love? What do you want more of? Those are the things. That, right. What are the big know. questions I asked about questions? a book? Right. Are you ready for this? What? There was a character in a book that was dead. It was a ghost. And there was magic floating around. And at times this character could come become corporeal. Right. And could eat and drink and fight and do all of that stuff. And then they'd be incorporeal and ghost form again. Okay. I wanted to know if they had to pee. That's a perfectly reasonable question. Right? Nobody else seems to think this was a perfect... They're like, why do you need to know? Like, well, you're eating and drinking this stuff. It's like, does it all just ghost away when he ghosts away? Or does, does it come back when he goes back to being the thing that... Yeah, these are what I obsess about. Well, that's a good question. And the reason is that makes you take a deeper dive. I mean, it doesn't have to wind up in the book. No. But the author should know 
the answer to questions like that. And I will be fair that this author is fair. I mean, it's Susan Harris. She was fantastic about it. She was just laughing so hard, though, at, like my little edit note, because it's like, and uh, the publishing company was just like, do we need to make that hashtag? Does, does Paris need to pee? I was like, well, I don't know. I just I just needed to know. It was just the, that was that was my big focus. That was like, all this world destroying and people taking over the world and everything going on. And I want to know if this ghost has to pee. <laughs> As the owner of a tiny bladder, I respect that question. <laughs> See, it's like you need to know these things. I mean, especially if they go off to battle. You don't stop in the middle of a battle and take a pee. Take a whiz off of the corner. <laughs> That's a big advantage to being a guy, I guess. You just... I guess you, you've got the option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that took a whole, a whole turn in a different direction. I really appreciate you just sort of like going with it, though. I'll take that. Um, I think I pretty much got the. Oh, Ashley had one more. If you were okay. a character in one of your own books, who would you be friends or enemies with? And how drastically do you think that would have changed the story? I would put myself in uh, pure um, with March the unicorn. That's the one that's set in DC, right? So that's, that's the one set in DC. So I'd know my way around to begin with. Bonus. Um, and I'm then, but then it would be terrible because I would try and steal March away from Ruby, and she would not be <laughs> very excited about that. Although March probably would be up for it. <laughs> now is Ruby a badass? Would she kick your ass? She... Ruby's kind of a badass. She's okay. uh, she's got some trauma in her own past, so she tries to keep her head down, but don't cross her. Don't cross it and don't try and take March. Just, uh, don't try and take March. March would probably be like, sure. <laughs> He's never said no to a good time. It's a bit like Captain Jack then in Doctor Who. Like, he yeah. is like that in many ways. I love that. But I can already tell I'm definitely going to have to like. Can I tell you the greatest this. moment of my life? No, do. Uh, I was at Comic-Con in San Diego a bunch of years ago and I was on the escalator. And in front of me was John Barrowman and his sister, <gasps> Carol, and they'd written a book. And I, I pulled out my camera and I was like, excuse me, are, are you? And I told him I was from Sirius XM and they looked at me and they went, are you Kim Alexander? They'd actually listened oh to, God. they knew who I was. That was the single greatest moment of my life. You know, this is two authors in a row that I have great John Barrowman stories. I'm feeling like I might He's be a delight. an author just so that I can get a John Barrowman story. I'm feeling very- Worth it. <laughs> I have I have his autograph upstairs that, um, one of my best friends, Jennifer and Dave, are awesome. They go to these conventions. I don't go to conventions because of issues. But they go to these conventions and they they grab me so many autographs, you know, and I have John Barrowman's. And, and so I'm, I'm very, very jealous that you've all got to meet John. And he, I knew, you know, in my heart, I just knew that he was going to be as awesome in person. He's a sweetheart. As you always see. Yeah. And I know from when Jen and Dave met him and, you know, it, I love that. I love that so many people have great stories about him. It's just you come to he's like yeah and you were really game you were just like oh yeah theme i was like yeah there, i mean i'll talk to anybody anywhere <laughs> about anything well yeah i feel really special now then so yeah that's what's really but you're the best of all <sighs> see there you go the full set